Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane back again for the Stock Pick of the Day video. It is September 20th, actually the day before my birthday. My birthday is on September 21st, so tomorrow uh, we are going to take a look at Intel today. This is one we've taken a look at in the past. It is one we used to hold in our portfolio. We'll talk through that a little bit. This is out of the technology sector. Let's jump right into it. If you want to know more about this company, check them out at www.intel.com. That's www.intel.com. We create world-changing technology that improves the life of every person on the planet. Intel put the silicon in Silicon Valley for more than 50 years. Intel and our people have had a profound influence on the world, driving business and society forward by creating radical innovation that revolutionizes the way we live. Today, we are applying our reach, scale, and resources to enable our customers to capitalize more fully on the power of digital technology. Inspired by Moore's Law, we continuously work to achieve the design and manufacturing of semiconductors to help address our customers' greatest challenges. And that really is their bread and butter, semiconductors. Again, we are talking about Intel. Let's keep on going here. And the reason we're talking about them today, down 4.5%. 4.54% on the day. We are talking about Intel Corporation, ticker INTC, out of the information technology sector. Closed out the day at $34.69. 52-week range as low as $24.59, as high as $40.07. Average volume, $38 billion. Today's was $54. Pretty much a sell-off throughout the day, right? It looks like they tried to recover here around 11 o'clock maybe, but then pretty much a sell-off from there. Market cap of 145.282 billion. Beta of 0.89. They are less volatile than the overall market. Not good that they don't have a price to earnings ratio. That must mean it's in the negative. Not good that their EPS is in the negative, right? Not good numbers. You're going to see a lot of bad numbers on this one overall. This company is having some trouble. That is part of the reason I sold out of this one. I did hold it uh, a while back and I sold it whenever they cut the dividend. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Earnings date, October 25th through October 30th. If you're interested, go ahead and look for that earnings date somewhere in between that range. Forward dividend is 50 cents. They are quarterly payer and their dividend yield is a low 1.32%. And since they recently cut their dividend, you'll see they do not have dividend growth right now. <clears throat> Ex-dividend date was August 4th. Looks like they paid out on September 1st. One-year target estimate, at least according to Yahoo Finance, is $35.07, which is pretty close to what they are at now. So they do not see much uh, appreciation in the stock price over the next year, at least according to Yahoo Finance on this one. And let's jump into statistics. If you go down to dividends and splits, we're going to take a look at dividend yield theory. To do that, we look at the five-year dividend average, which is 3%. Compare it to the current 1.32 or over here for an annual dividend yield. And this is much lower. And so this would speak to overvaluation on this one but i will say this may be a little bit a little bit misleading because they did recently cut their dividend so since they cut their dividend obviously the five-year average would be much higher than that so dividend yield theory is probably not a great metric to use on this one overall payout ratio is not listed that's not good to see either right a lot of these numbers pe ratio eps in the negative no payout ratio listed. That leads me to believe they may be over their free cash flow payout, right? So probably in the negative. Let's look and see if that's the case. You want to look into the financials of a company. You want to get in there. There's going to be some good information. You can look at their balance sheet, their income statement. Is revenue growing over time? How is their debt looking? Do they have more assets than liabilities? Uh, can they pay down their debt? Are they paying down their debt? All that information is under financials. We want to look at free cash flow because we want growing free cash flow so that our dividends grow over time and we don't get dividend cuts like this one did recently. So to do that, let's look at free cash flow. 2019, 16.9 billion. 2020, up to 20.9 billion. Huge drop from 2020 to 2021, 9.6 billion. And then a bigger drop, and this is where it really starts to get wonky. 2022, negative 9.6 billion. And it looks like if you look at where they're at in 2023, it's going to be even more negative. Now they are doing some investments, building some new facilities that are supposed to come online here in the next couple of years that will help their revenue, bringing some manufacturing back on shore, which I really like that. I actually really like that they are investing in themselves, building new manufacturing plants and bringing jobs back to America. That's part of the reason that I bought into the company. 
But I have some serious concerns. As you can see here as well, let's look at repurchase of the capital stock. Sometimes we can tell something by that, right? So they are repurchasing shares in 2019, big tranche in 2020, even more shares in 2021. But then again, negative and cut their dividend in 2022, uh, which if you're having financial difficulties, why are you buying back shares? I just don't understand that. They could have been taking this money that they were repurchasing shares and paying down debt instead of, you know, which I, I appreciate it if I'm a shareholder that they're buying back shares, but not if, at the expense of dividend cuts later, right? So it leads me to believe the management team is not doing a great job of forecasting out where they're at, where they're going, what they need to use their free cash flow for. Like I said, they could be paying down debt with this, all these repurchases here. I mean, these are big tranches in 2019 and 2020. Not as much in 2021, but you're still buying back shares in 2021 whenever you, the very next year, you're in the negative free cash flow and you have to cut your dividend. It just doesn't make sense to me and it doesn't speak to good management practices with their free cash flow. So that is concerning to me as an investor that they are not projecting out long term where they're going to be in the future years. Let's keep going here. I always recommend more than one source. Another source that I like is stockanalysis.com. I am not affiliated with either one of these, just two sources that I like. You can pick any sources that you like. Just make sure you're looking at at least two sources so you can back check the information you get is accurate. Don't hang your hat on just one source. If it's wrong, then you're just getting bad information. Always back check and make with an, another source to make sure the information you're getting is accurate. But, now, according to the 27 stock analysts that have taken a look at this, they call it a consensus hold. I would completely agree on this, if not a sell at 34.69, uh, in my opinion. They have a low estimate of $17. That would be a 50.99% drop from where it currently sits. And to be honest with you, if it dropped back to 17, I might actually take a look at it again. Average estimate of $34.02, that would be even lower than where it currently sits, 1.93% drop on that one. And if it happened to hit their high of $46, that would be a 32.60% increase, and that would be a new 52-week high. I just, I don't know if I'm buying that. And the fact that two of their estimates are lower than where it currently sits leads me to believe that this one may have further to drop. Uh, again, back down to the $24 range would not surprise me on this one. Now let's look at statistics. I like to look at return on equity, return on invested capital. I like 10% or better. As you can see here, return on equity, negative 9.0% does not meet that mark. Return on invested capital, negative 2.30% does not meet the 10% I want there. So again, all these numbers look very bad. Now I will say, looking at the EPS forecasted growth, I like 5% or better and they're showing 16.94% growth, but they're currently in the negative. So is this really impressive to come out of the negative and, and have some growth? Well, I would hope that you're growing and you know, come out of negative. Uh, that would be a, that would at least be a positive. But that so I'm not real impressed with the EPS growth forecast, and I don't know that I buy it until I see it. I'm going to be hesitant on this one. They also see revenue growth forecast is 6.18%. But again, if your free cash flow is in the negative and your revenue growth has been declining, is a 6.18% increase really that impressive over the next five years? Uh, I, I'm not, again, these numbers just don't look good to me. I would want to see a couple more quarters on this to see if they were really turning this one around again. I would really not be interested in this uh, unless it dropped back into the 20s, maybe $28 and below. I might nibble on it a little bit. To be honest with you, I think there are better opportunities out there in the market. And if you were buying Intel right now, it is with the understanding that this is a turnaround play and you're hoping for the best on this one. Uh, for me, it's one I'm kind of avoiding right now. Again, unless, you know, if it dropped back into the $17 range, then I might look at it because we are going to need chips in the future. They are building plants here in, in, on our home turf in America. If you're an American, I'm an American. So I do like those aspects of the company. I just don't like the valuation right now. And I don't like all these negative numbers, negative uh, price to earnings ratio, negative EPS, negative return on equity, negative return on invested capital. I mean, none of these numbers look good right now. Now, again, we'll look at the dividend, but again, payout ratio not listed. So that leads me to believe that they are in the negative and they are in the negative free, key, free cash flow. That's why it's not listed. So dividend growth is negative. They recently cut the dividend. Let's take a look at it. August 20th, they were paying 20, 33 cents. They raised it up February 2021 to 34 cents. Raised it up again February 22nd to 36 cents. Raised it up again. Uh, or I'm sorry, didn't raise it again. That's when they dropped it. May 2023, they dropped it from 36 cents to 12 cents in a fraction of a penny over here. So again, if 
you knew as a management company you were having difficulties, why would you have raised the dividend back here in 2022? Why not keep the dividend flat, not buy back a bunch of shares, and use that money to pay down debt, right? Th then you wouldn't be maybe in the, in the negative on your payout ratio, maybe not had to have to cut your dividend. I don't know. It just, again, does not lead me to believe management is doing a great job of forecasting where they're going as a company. And that's concerning to me. The other thing that was concerning to me around the dividend and what really had me sell, because I was willing to ride this out, I held it after they cut the dividend for a little while here in uh, 2023. Uh, but they, they announced here in the end of 2022, or maybe it was right in the beginning of 2023, the management team came out and announced that the dividend was safe. And then within a month, they cut the dividend. So again, it, I can't trust the management team to shoot me straight or, or be honest with me and tell me, you know, we're in trouble. We might have to cut the dividend. They, they said, nope, dividend safe, and then went ahead and cut it anyway. So I'm just not impressed with the management team and I'm not impressed with all the neg negative numbers that I see here in the data. This is the vested interest stock screener. This is how I set up the uh, videos. This is also how I look at a business on a high level to see if I'm interested. If I am interested and it meets the five out of eight for a regular company or financial six out of nine, then I do a deeper dive looking at the revenue, looking at the balance sheet, looking at their debt to equity ratios, that sort of information. Uh, so this is on a high level and also how I set up the videos. Well, that is it for this one. Let me know what you think of Intel. Are you holding Intel? Are you an investor? Are you looking for more of a pullback? Are there other stocks in this sector that you like? I know Qualcomm's out there. NVIDIA one seems to be the hot flyer right now. Let me know what you're adding to your portfolio right now in the semiconductor space. Drop it in the comments down below. As always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Join us here on the Vested Interest community. Join us on this journey to financial freedom, building a community of like-minded dividend growth investors so we can share our experiences. Stocks like this one that we may be avoiding, stocks that we're watching, tips and tricks that we've learned along the way as investors. We cannot benefit from each other's investing, but we can benefit from each other's knowledge base and what we've learned along the way good and bad you know you can learn something from what someone did wrong as well so that you don't make the same mistakes so don't be afraid to drop those comments down below and if you have a stock like intel you'd like me to work into the stock pick of the day and make a video on drop that in the comment section down below i do personally read and respond to the comments i'm always interested to read your questions opinions or suggestions for future topics and this is shane signing off wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours and remember if any security comes with those who take aid vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by and we'll see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm going to share my opinion and investing journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk and can money should never invest any amount not comfortable losing. Always do your own research and best based in your situation, circumstances, and select criteria or seek the advice counsel a certified financial advisor.